So if you're wondering what all this lumber is about, I'm building some build tables to build an airplane. As I mentioned in a previous video, I was looking at a, several different aircraft, trying to decide which one I wanted to build, and I decided on one. So if you wanna find out which airplane I decided on that I'm gonna build, stick around to the end of the video because today they are delivering all the parts for it. So as I mentioned in a previous video back during the summer when I was at Oshkosh, I was trying to decide which airplane I wanted to build and I had it narrowed down between three, eh, maybe four aircraft. So I posted a survey online to the community to try to get some opinions, help drive me in maybe one direction or the other. And the survey results were, were kind of mixed. A lot of people apparently uh, like a lot of different airplanes like I do, so there wasn't uh, wasn't anything really shoving me hard in one direction or the other. And, and I can't say that I would have relied 100% on that information anyway, because ultimately I've got to live with this thing, right? But one thing that I did kind of realize, as much as I like the look, the performance, pretty much everything about the Velocity aircraft, it's just a stunning aircraft. At the end of the day, you know, the build process, it's more about the journey than the destination. And it's a long process to build an airplane and I want to have fun when I'm doing it because I like working with my hands and stuff. And to be honest with you, the thought of coming out here several days a week, many hours a day, working on fiberglass, composite materials, resin, all that kind of stuff, that just doesn't sound like fun. That just sounds like a lot of work. So in the end, I pulled myself back from that and decided to go with one of the RV aircraft. So what I'm doing right now with all this wood is putting the shop together basically. Now, when I ordered the airplane back in September, I was given a time estimate of probably May to June for delivery of the tail kit to get started on the airplane. Um, today is February 9th. May and June's a good bit out there. So, that was great, right? Plenty of time to convert the garage into a workshop, build my build tables that I'm doing. I got a bunch of shelves coming in, got to clear a bunch of stuff out, got tools that I've got uh, coming from Cleveland Aircraft Tools. So lots of stuff to do over the next several months to get everything ready. But, um, yeah, I uh, got an email last week saying that they were about ready to ship my stuff. And then I went on last night and realized that not only were they ready to ship my stuff, they shipped my stuff. And it's actually gonna be delivered this afternoon. So, what, four or five months ahead of schedule? Um, I guess that's good. The problem is I'm not ready to do any of that stuff yet. I got a lot of stuff to do and I don't even have any of my tools yet. So, but yeah, anyway, it's gonna be exciting to take delivery of it and stick around. I'll pop the box open and show you which aircraft I decided to build. So while I'm waiting for the truck to arrive with all the aircraft pieces, I'm finishing up the work tables that I'll build the aircraft on. To do this, I'm using plans that were developed by one of the EAA chapters, uh, what they consider the standardized work table. I downloaded these plans. They're pretty simple to follow, and it's kind of become a standard among builders of the RV aircraft. Just because the table size works out really well for the build, uh, they're not too big, they're not too small, they're maneuverable and you can stack a couple tables together when you need a long table. So following the plans, I'm converting all of this wood into a few tables. The plans are pretty simple and pretty basic. It consists of a couple sheets of plywood and then a lot of two by fours. So after cutting up the two by fours into the appropriate size and then doing the same thing with the plywood, it's just a process of kind of putting it all together with some screws and some wood glue. And after a couple hours, you end up with a couple of tables that look like this. And then shortly after finishing these tables, there was a truck pulling up outside.
<laughs> There's a giant box in my garage. So what's inside this box, you ask? Well, so let's talk about that. Um, as I mentioned, I did not go with a Velocity, uh, but chose to go with a Vans aircraft because I decided metal aircraft was gonna be a lot more fun to actually build. So that left me with the choices of the RV-10, the RV-14, and the RV-8. So I put out that survey that I mentioned, and the survey results came out pretty dead even between the RV-10 and the RV-14. Uh, the RV-8 just a little bit behind there. And like I mentioned, that survey wasn't gonna be the end-all be-all decision maker for me. But I just wanted to see if there was something to maybe help me nudge in one direction or the other. But at the end of the day, I think what kind of made the decision for me, like with my previous airplane purchase, is what's the mission? Wanted an airplane that, you know, could do some great cross country and, and be comfortable doing that and nice speed and everything. But I also wanted something that was aerobatic, something I could have fun in. So when you look at that part of the mission, kind of takes the RV-10 out of the equation. Beautiful cross-country platform, amazing performance and comfort, four seats, all that room, <laughs> but it's not aerobatic. And I already have an airplane that's not aerobatic uh, that has four seats. So kind of reluctantly that takes that out of the equation. I and mean, that left me between the eight and the 14. And again, both fully aerobatic, phenomenal airplanes, a lot of fun to fly, but which one's gonna be better for those cross country trips as far as comfort and all that stuff? Well, let's just look in the box and find out. And like I mentioned, I don't have the shop set up yet. I don't have all my shelving units in or anything like that. So I don't wanna take everything totally out of the box yet because uh, I just don't have anywhere to put it and it's all safer inside the packaging than it would be out. But let's at least see what's in here. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And for those of you not familiar, there's a the blue plastic coating that's on top of the aluminum here. So this is actually not painted or anything. This is, it's silver aluminum, but it's got a blue plastic coating on it just to keep it from getting all scratched up. All right, I'll take a couple pieces off. This is what I was looking for. So, let's see what I bought. Are you as excited as I am? Probably not. And the winner is the RV-14. So there you have it. That's the plan, building an RV-14. There's a couple pieces of the side of the empennage or tail section of the airplane. The rest of the tail is in the box. All I have to do now is turn it from a flat box of parts into something that looks a little bit more like that. How hard can it be? Let's find out. All right, guys, so thanks for tuning in for the start of the journey. Got a lot of stuff to do. Got to get the shop ready, get the shelves in, go through and inventory all the parts. That's kind of the first step in the process, just making sure that you've got everything that you're supposed to have in the box. So. For now, I'll put this back in the box. Once I get my shelves and everything set up, place to put everything, I'll go ahead and inventory this stuff. And then uh, 
get some tools in here, we'll start building. Hope you'll follow along for that process if that sounds interesting to you. So I plan to document as much of the build process as I can without getting into too much minutia, but anything that seems like it would be a useful tip or a hint, I'll try to cover that. And I'll obviously keep up with the overall progress of the project to make it as enjoyable to watch as possible. But as always guys, if you like the content on the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like it, give us a thumbs up, tell your friends about it. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.